All right, so let's set up the rest of the scene and uh, decide on some camera angles and aspect ratios and so forth for this shot that we are creating. And there's a few different things that you can do to create a, a photographic rendering. Um, one is to model a 3D scene to place these binoculars in, or maybe add a, a backdrop ramp. Um, but the simplest thing, but yet still quite effective, is to add in a ground plane with some texture on that this product is, is laying on. Um, and to do so, you go to Edit, Add Geometry, and hit the ground plane. And what this does is that it adds in a square with uh, the ground plane material on it. Before moving on with the texturing and materials of this ground plane, I want to place the binoculars down on this ground plane. As you can see right now, they are hovering in the air uh, a, a bit above that. So if I go to the scene tree and select the entire model, and go to the position and hit snap to ground. Then you can see that uh, it's snapping, but the angle is not right. And if we activate the move tool, rotate it uh, like so, and hit snap to ground, then uh, it's not really able to detect um, if this is sitting on the ground or not. Uh, and to do this precise, uh, alignments, I like to go into the um, geometry editor, hit the button up here or hit O on your keyboard. And here in the geometry view, I want to switch to left view and I want to activate or the graphic view if you haven't done that already. And then I can uh, select the model, right click and say move selection. And then, whoops. If I just make the window a bit bigger, I can move it over here while seeing how it looks in the real-time view. So I'll zoom in. Looks like we got the angle quite right just before, so I wanna, don't want to adjust that any further. Uh, and you can see here that my uh, axis is set to global, and that means because I have angled it, um, for example, if it was way more angled and I wanted to take this straight down, uh, I could go to the global and then I get uh, these straight on axes. Um, yeah, so that's just a, a quick tip, but let's rotate this back and move it down like this and hit the green check mark when you are done and close this uh, geometry view down. Oops, if you want to save, yeah, do that. By the way, this uh, save reminder, if you don't know it, you can go into the uh, Keyshot Preferences and activate that down here in the General tab. There's the one called Save Reminder, and you can define how many minutes you want between each uh, notification. So uh, it's a good one if you forget to save. Before moving on with the ground plane material, I just want to go to the camera tab and switch back to the perspective lens setting. Cool. So this ground plane that we got has this ground plane material uh, where you can define the shadow color and a few other things. But if you want to add a specific texture, we have to change the material type to something like plastic. And uh, now we can uh, Bring up the specular, we could that before as well. But what we can do now is to add a, a bitmap image into the fuse channel by clicking this box here. So let's go ahead and do that. And for the material that I want to do, uh, I want to use this marble texture that I got from epischura.com. Kindly got permission to uh, to use it. Um, sadly, it seems that uh, since I, I got the permission to use this texture, this site has been taken down. Um, but if it at any time come up again, then make sure to uh, to give these guys a visit. It, it, it was a site, at least, with a lot of great texture images. You find it here in your resource folder under textures, the one called Marble. So hit open. And 
first thing I want to do here is to uh, adjust the scaling to something like six or seven, six, I think. And then I just also want to use this uh, diffuse map in the bump channel as well. So I hold down Alt on the keyboard while I left click and drag the, uh, the texture map over to this bump channel. And let's activate the region view to have things rest up a bit quicker while we look at the bump map. Um, and I want to adjust the height of it. So I go to the, make sure the bump map is selected and go down here and change the bump height to point 0.1 perhaps, maybe a bit more 0.4. I think that is, uh, that is good for now. Command shift R to get back. And then I also want to use this same image in the uh, roughness channel. I can't do that uh, out here. I have to go into the material graph. So I do that, hit the material graph button, do the typical rearranging of everything. And then I take the map here and drag down to the plus sign and click on the roughness. Okay. So to uh, adjust this roughness map, I'm going to add in this uh, color to number utility node that we have used before, like so. And then if I hit C on the keyboard while having this color number active, I see the, the raw color information. So these black parts, I want to, uh, to have those even blacker, so they will get way shinier. And you can see here in the background that we have a, a real huge difference between the shiny parts and the rough parts. So maybe I want to bring that down a bit. So I go and take this uh, output two and bring that down. I constantly shifting between showing the the material and the, the color information of this node. So I think everything is actually too shiny. So I'll bring this output from up. And I'm satisfied with that now. So uh, let's uh, get out the material graph and maximize the window. Now we are ready to set up the, uh, the actual composition of this scene. And um, there are a few things that I use to uh, go through when setting up the, the composition. The first one is to uh, go to the image tab, hit space on the keyboard to bring up that uh, project window or do it down here. And uh, here under the image tab, you can set the uh, the resolution and that is also what's giving you your aspect ratio. So you kind of have to know if you're doing like a landscape rendering or portrait rendering, and if you need some specific uh, format, maybe you have to print it on an A3 uh, paper, any of the A formats, or maybe you're going for square setup or anything like that. There's also the, the classic 16 by nine ratio. Um, but if you want to use a ratio that's not here, um, could be the, uh, the cinematic uh, 2.35 to one. Uh, you can go to edit custom and add a, a custom aspect ratio by hitting the plus sign. Let's call this 225 to one. And we can now enter a width of 235 to 100, which gives us this ratio and hit OK. So if you want to use that now, you can go to the preset, go to custom and then select this one. I think for this uh, rendering, I want to go with uh, 16 by nine. So let's go ahead and select that. And when I have set my, uh, my aspect ratio, I uh, play around with the focal length uh, of the camera that could be done up here or in the camera settings under here, the perspective focal length slider. So what you want to pay attention to here is the, uh, the effect that it gives you with the, a low focal length, you get clear perspective lines, uh, clear converging perspective lines, and it gives you a 
more dynamic image. Um, and as or the higher you go, the the less converging this perspective effect is. You get a more calm looking uh, image. So what you want to choose is like it depends on the product you are showing and the kind of emotion you want to convey with this rendering. But for this one, I want to go with something rather calm, but still have a bit of a perspective effect. Uh, so we're not going into this completely autographical view uh, type of view. And I think I will go with something like 60 for this one. Then I think about where I want to place my, uh, my rendering in the scene or my object in the scene. And for a three quarter view like this that I'm going for in this rendering, I like to, uh, to have it slightly to, to one of these sides. And because, the, uh, because these binoculars are sort of pointing in, in this direction, I want to have the, a lot of air here. Um, if we had the binoculars over here, it feels like uh, feels stressed in some way. That there's no reason to have room here. Um, it feels more natural here. So we want to have more air here because that's the way the binoculars are looking. But still, we also want to <clears throat> be careful that we have uh, some air here in the top and the bottom, and also on the right side. To aid the position of the the object. There's this grid option in the uh, camera tab where you can get this uh, grid of halves showing the exact center of the of, of this aspect ratio. Um, so if you were to put a put the product in the exact center, you could use those. Uh, but you can also show, for example, thirds um, and use that as a guide to position your your rendering. Let me just hide the ground plane for now so it renders a bit quicker. And also remember, you can always check on uh, performance mode so that when adjusting the camera angle, it, it everything goes a bit more smoothly. Um, and when finding the, the final camera angle, what I'm careful about is to avoid any tangents. And that is if um, we wanted a shot like this, then this... Uh, thing where when an object in the background touches uh, just barely touches an object in the foreground uh, that's something that you want to avoid because it really flattens the uh, the image um, so either there should be a clear overlap or there should be a clear distance between the objects could also be if you're doing a shot from from the back here that uh, or something like this where those tips are just touching, touching. Um, so either make sure there's some slight overlap or a big gap. Also, I like to avoid that lines are um, on top of each other like this, so that there's at least some kind of difference to help uh, to give the sense of depth. So for this shot, I go with something like this and this object is fairly simple so we don't have any uh, real problems with the tangents but it can be tough to to avoid uh, any tangents at all if you have a more complex product but just make sure that where you want the the viewer to focus that you don't have any uh, of those so i'm quite happy with this and then to like roughly dial in the distance, I use the scroll wheel on the mouse, but to really fine tune it, I go to this uh, distance slider and make sure we have some, some air in the top and button. Maybe view a bit more from the front. One last thing you can do also to check the, the composition of the product is to uh, pick the main uh, assembly and then have a look at this outline and see if it seems comfortable uh, if that makes sense at all but here we have like a clear uh, easy to read uh, silhouette line um, it's like even if we made this project product completely black you 
would be able to read that this is a pair of binoculars. And that's something to, to take in consideration as well. Let's uh, add in the background or the ground plane again and go to the camera tab. The final thing I want to add here is uh, some depth of field, which also helped to, uh, to really give a photographic effect. Um, so check that and select point of focus. So for this shot, I want the focus to, to lie across the product around here. So I click on this part here. And as you can see, the depth of field right now is way too prominent. And to make that less prominent, you adjust the f-stop, you increase it to make it less prominent and decrease to make it even tighter. But for now, I want to go with something like 10. And to, uh, to really assess it a bit quicker, I utilize this region view once more. Command Shift R, Control Shift R, um, and then just select like a tiny part of the image. Because that way I can really quickly see um, the effect of the, uh, the depth of field. Um, and also I want this view to fill my entire screen. So to do that, I just need to resize the entire window one and it, it snaps to the full view. So if I look at something like this, I want the background to be blurred, but I don't want uh, this front part to be blurred too much. So I step up the numbers and I think, whoops, that a value around nine. Let's get this up so you can see it from my head. Uh, a value around nine or 10 is what I'm looking for. I'll go with nine. Cool. So uh, when you're set, go up and uh, make sure to save the camera. And here I'm saving it as a view set. So we also save the information uh, about the lighting. Hit that one. And let's call this one three quarter view. Hit the save button and log it. So now we can't move it, but there seems to be some problems with the depth of field. So let me just go down and take a look at that. Let's make this to nine and select the point here like so move up and save it and log it and also i want to go out of this uh, performance mode awesome so with all that set it's uh it's time to do some lighting 